Well, a lot of people who've read Existence have been asking lately for more details about the topic that I raised there, which is the Fermi paradox, or what I called in a scientific paper back in 1983, the great silence. That is that Frank Drake, Carl Sagan, the other founders of SETI, the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, they expected to find great blaring tutorial beacons, radio stations, blasting through the cosmos, saying, you who, you, you new races out there, here's your guidebook. Here's your Boy Scout manual. Here's, here's how to survive these crises. If you parse out the Frank Drake's equation, everyone agrees that it looks like the galaxy's pretty empty. Why? The uniqueness crowd looks at explanations that might be behind us, like how many planets there are, but we're discovering, we've discovered a thousand in the last 15 years from zero. Um, or how likely life is to develop. The last stages of developing life may be very, very hard, but so far all the stages we found <laughs> seem to be pretty easy. Intelligence. Now there you got an interesting one. We have found more than a dozen species on planet Earth that can parse relatively complex semantics. Sea lions, uh, prairie dogs, uh, uh, parrots and, and, and corvids, uh, uh, crows, and it goes on down the line, possibly even octopi, all of them slightly below chimps and, and dolphins, all of them crowding against a grass, glass ceiling that seems to, s Darwin is stingy about letting them go beyond, but we burst way beyond. Could that be a fluke? So you're going through these parts of the Drake equation, and there are the factors that might mean that the galaxy is relatively empty because the things that brought about us are rare. One of them, two of them. And then there are the grouchy guys who say, the crises are in front of us. Nuclear war, nuclear winter, environmental dis mismanagement, uh, or, as I raise in existence, some other possibilities, like renunciation of science, renunciation of progress. I mean, this is a strong possible way in which many, because many, most of our human civilizations were hyper-conservative, because they didn't want to disturb that pyramidal so social structure. The debate is ongoing. It's the most fascinating debate of all. The only rival that it has is, Will we or will we not have a singularity that turns us into gods? I mean, these are two science fiction-based notions. And they're gaining quite a lot of currency outside our field because they're the two most interesting questions around.